Hello there! Today we're going to do something different and show you how to cast plaster sculptures by creating your own mould. I'm going to create an owl but you could try any kind of sculpture and once you have your mould you can mass produce your work of art. There's not a lot of info out there on creating your own DIY moulds and I had to experiment a lot to put this lesson together and get it just right. We hope you enjoy it and get inspired to create all kinds of your own DIY sculptures. So while this sculpture wouldn't normally need an armature for a support, because we're taking a mould and the casting of it, we really need the sculpture to remain immovable. So I've basically just got two uh, similar sized pieces of timber. Um, drilled a hole into the top one and fixed a booker rod through it and then I've cut a hole in the bottom um, to make way for the bottom nut and then just basically screwed them together. If you'd like to give this project a go you can download this set of outlines and lesson plan from the link above. You'll also need a spray bottle filled with water, some dividers, a hobby knife, a utility knife, a wooden spike modelling tool, a ribbon tool, stainless steel flat tool and a wooden smoothing tool and of course air drying clay and we'll be using two 2kg terracotta blocks for this project. Start by placing the first block of clay up against the booker rod so the rod lies centrally between the clay. Score the surface with a knife. This will make the join between the two blocks of clay much stronger. Apply some water to the surface of the clay and place the other block of clay down onto the first and press them firmly together. Next, take the outline images from our downloadable lesson plan and cut them out. The ones I'm using have been printed out to A3 size. And remember, always be very careful when using a hobby knife. Apply the side profiles of your printout to the clay block and use a fettling knife to cut away the waste clay. The back of the owl has a gentle curve. We'll use some of our offcut to lay on top and create this curve, removing the excess. Fettling knives are not particularly sharp, but always cut away from yourself. Put any offcuts into an airtight container straight away to stop them drying out. Once you've created the sides of your owl, repeat the process and work on the front and back of the sculpture. Use a utility knife to remove the corners of the clay. To create the rounded shape of the owl, you can see in our outline, remove the clay until each angle looks the same, constantly spinning the sculpture so you can see it from every angle. I like to use a wheel or carousel to spin my work on. You could even use the Lazy Susan. Once you're happy with the general shape, dip your hands in water and smooth off the sculpture. Next, use your divider tool to find the angle of the wing. From this point, you'll be able to establish the other points that relate to your central point. Take a look at the shape of the owl's wing on the outline and follow it as closely as you can on both sides and cut in the tail, then smooth it all off. Now that we've established where our wings are situated, carve the head so that it is rounded and remove the excess off the front of the wing. There are two styles or techniques to clay and sculpting, which I've also explained in another lesson, our fairy tea light sculpture. The first is what I like to call the addition style. This is where you build up the sculpture with little bits of clay until you end up with a 3D sculpture. The second is more of a subtractive carving style where you usually start with a big block or large shape and then take the clay away. The addition style is ideal for portraits and realistic sculpture because it tends to be more organic and lends itself to a loose style. Flat planes and angles can be harder to achieve with addition. This is where you might want to try the subtractive carving style. Now you can use a ribbon tool to remove the clay from any undercuts. Once this is done, use a flat wooden modelling tool to smooth the clay. If you want an even smoother coat, you can dip your fingers in water and smooth it off just like that. With any sculptural project, you'll find it's always a process of refinement and close observation.
to let our, our sculpture dry. A sculpture this big will take about three days. Don't worry if you see some cracks form, this is natural and they can be easily fixed. You'll know when your clay is dry because it changes colour. It's normal to see cracks form because your clay will shrink back when its moisture evaporates. It's pretty easy to fix cracks by moistening the area and filling the crack with wet clay. Then blend it into the surrounding dry clay. And your repair won't crack again because your clay has already shrunk to its limit. Finish it off by taking a wet brush and dampening the surrounding area. To prepare our sculpture for the mould making process, first seal the clay. I'm using a clear acrylic spray paint for this, but you could also try applying a coat of acrylic paint very thinly. In this next stage, we're going to use modelling clay to create a separation wall over half of our owl. Make sure you create a good seal over the sculpture by tightly packing the clay together. It's ideal to use modelling clay as a wall for your sculpture because it's wax based and your silicon and plaster won't stick to it. Use a steel modelling tool to blend the clay together. You want the edge of your mould to be smooth and even. Once our wall is on, we'll reinforce it with balls of modelling clay. We want to make sure there's no movement when we add our silicon and plaster, otherwise our wall could slide out of position. Add a second layer of clay onto the wall to double its thickness. Before we add the mould, we're going to apply a mould release agent to our sculpture. The best DIY mould release agent is made from petroleum jelly and white spirits. Combine until your mixture is the viscosity of cream. Apply your mould release agent over half of the sculpture. Make sure you apply it to the base as well as plaster bonds to timber very strongly. Now it's getting really exciting. We're going to start creating the silicon part of our mould. For this you'll need some 100% Ace Toxy silicone. In America this is called Silicon One. Make sure you don't use neutral clear silicon because it takes a super long time to cure. Now we're going to need some food colouring, corn flour, a couple of disposable bowls and something to mix it all with. Start by laying the corn flour into the dish. Then pour some food colouring into a separate bowl and then add the silicon to this bowl. I'm using a round tipped palette knife to mix but you could use any sturdy utensil. It takes a bit of mixing but don't worry your mix will come together. You'll know it's mixed enough when your silicon has completely changed colour. Place your silicon into the corn flour and knead the mix until it becomes pliable. Kind of like a pizza dough. If you don't want to get yellow hands like I did you can wear some latex gloves although the yellow will wash off after a while. Knead the ball until the colour comes back and if you find it's too sticky coat it with more corn flour. Be careful though, too much corn flour will harden your silicon pretty quickly and it'll end up becoming unusable. For this technique of mould making you want your silicon to be a little sticky. It will help it bond to the structure and won't pull away from the surface. Push the silicon hard against the sculpture to remove any pockets of air. Use the corn flour on your hands so the silicon doesn't stick to them. Your silicon should cure in about 20 to 30 minutes. While it's still workable, apply a couple of knobs onto the surface. These are going to help fix the silicon to the plaster jacket. We'll apply in the next step. Take a large paintbrush and create some indentations with the end of the handle. These are going to be our registration holes. That will fix the two halves of our mould together in the correct position. To create our jacket we're going to mix up some plaster of Paris. We want our consistency to be quite thick so we can build it up to a solid structure. Don't worry about air bubbles, just drizzle it over the silicon. And keep building up that jacket. Plaster dries quite quickly so get the coats on as fast as you can smoothing as you go. Mix up small batches of plaster so you can minimise your waste. This will mean you'll probably need to mix three to four batches. But it's great to only use what you need. The smoother the outside of your jacket, the stronger it will be. A mould like this can last for years and you could literally make hundreds of casts. So it's worth doing a good job. Once your jacket is nice and smooth, use a sharp wooden tool to pare back the plaster to the level of the modelling clay wall. Let the plaster dry for at least one hour. We can now remove our plaster wall and see how well our mould has formed. The clay should come off nice and easily. 
Once you've removed the clay, you'll probably find some areas around the edge that will need cleaning up, so your mould edging is nice and smooth. Our plaster is dry, but still quite soft, with a sure hardness of, say, chalk, and it's pretty easy to remove any rough areas. The best tool for this is a palette knife. You can then lie your sculpture jacket side down and repeat on the other side. second half of your jacket dry for at least an hour. Stand it upright and pare back the plaster with a fettling knife. Remove the waste plaster until you can see the join line. Your plaster will be chalky at this stage so be careful not to remove too much of your jacket or you can accidentally remove your registration lugs as well. Leave the mould dry overnight. Lay the mould on its side and loosen the bottom armature nut. Gently twist the mould until the bond to the base is broken. Take a butter knife and carefully insert it into the joint line. Then insert the knife into the base of the mould and gently pull the mould apart. Pull off the back of the bottom half, then prise the front of the top half off by pushing the base away from the sculpture. And voila! We now have a perfect two-part mould. Place the two pieces back together and bind them tightly. I'm using a tie-down strap, but you could also use rope or a cord. Make sure the two halves are tightly secured. Place your mould upside down into a bucket, ensuring that the base is level. Now to fill our mould. Mix up some plaster to the thickness of pancake batter. Using your hands to mix gently. This way you'll create less bubbles. You'll need to experiment to get the proportions right, but a good casting mix generally has about three parts plaster of Paris to one part water. Pour the plaster into the deepest part of your mould, filling it right up to the top. Tap the sides of the bucket to release any air bubbles and scrape back the waste on the base. Leave this to set for an hour. Now that our plaster has partially cured, we can remove our cast from the mould. This is the exciting part, when all of our work comes to fruition. Remove the binding and gently prise apart the mould. Your mould should come apart quite easily. Remove the back section first and then the front. You'll notice it might be a little bit harder to remove the front cast because there is more material on this side. But because silicon is so flexible, you'll be able to get it out without damaging either your mould or the cast. With any cast you make from a multiple part mould, you'll get a little bit of wastage that sits between the mould joints. This is called flashing. You can clean it up with various modelling tools. This is called chasing the cast. At this stage, you can also redefine any areas or fill holes from air bubbles. In 72 hours, your cast will be fully cured and as hard as it's going to get. Well, that took a little bit of patience, but it was a real lot of fun. We hope you enjoyed the lesson and can see how you could apply this DIY cast making process to all kinds of projects. You could try using concrete, wax or even resin and your mould will last for years you'll be able to literally make hundreds of your masterpiece for everybody to enjoy.